first I want to ask you two gentlemen, if what we saw that there has been a lot of more um, greener aid, but it's more fragmented. And why is that, do you think? You want to go? Sure. So uh, but my first answer to that question would be that uh, donors, th this reflects donor politics uh, with, you know, it, it reflects domestic politics within donor countries. Uh, it reflects broader political and economic considerations. So our data run through 2008, and we're currently in the process of updating it beyond that through at least 2010. So it doesn't really, the, the recent financial crisis of 2008 doesn't really factor into the results that I showed a moment ago. That's one potential question that I want to make clear. But we expect that you know the financial crisis would only, if anything, really amplify those trends. And why is that? Why is it better for countries to do bilateral than multilateral? Well, because it, to the extent that donors are concerned not just to generate environmental benefits in recipient countries, but to also generate sort of spin-off benefits for domestic constituencies. Jobs. Jobs such as aid providers, for example, engineering or contracting firms, right? There's donors can exert much greater control by working through bilateral agencies than by contributing money to multilateral organizations where they are just one principle among many. And so for that reason, I would expect that this trend towards bilateralization has certainly continued and possibly intensified, but we're hoping to discover more specific information about that. So. Uh, a moment to go. Esesa, do you think it would be better for Uganda to have multilateral or those bilateral um, because when, when, when we saw of all the different recipients giving to a lot of different things, mm -hmm. what do you think would be better for uh, Uganda's case? Um, I wouldn't say it's better for the multilateral, bilateral. I think what matters is the management of the aid itself, whether it comes from the bilateral, multilateral. To get the impact done on the ground, it's about managing the funds. And what do you see? Of course, the multilateral, the sum, the amount of money given by the multilateral organizations is much bigger than the, ma the bilateral in many cases. The amount, but you talk yeah. about effectiveness. Effectiveness uh, on the ground, it depends on the management of the resources. So it could be anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering whether or not it's too early to start being very pessimistic, or if it's too early to read much into that bilateral aid flow. Um, is it not possible that given this increase in enthusiasm to invest in environmental issues, in some ways the bilateral is the quick start and it takes time? I mean working for the UN, we know it takes time to mobilize multilateral organizations. There may be resistance from large developing countries to, to, uh, to, to, um, to come to an agreement on how multilateral organizations should, should mobilize. So is it not possible that all we're seeing is an inertia in the multilateral system and that with time the bilateral aid will transfer over to those, those multilateral organizations? I think it's very interesting, the work that you're doing, and I think it's going to be very interesting to see the continuation of that. We had a chance to work on, on some of your data and also observing this trend that you have portrayed there and looking into many of the aid agreements from 2006 onwards. Uh, it was clear that it was smaller aid agreement in preparation for uh, this climate summit in Copenhagen. So it's bilateral agencies giving support to X country and to prepare them and help their preparations for the summit. And, and I would expect that that trend would then drop after 2009. Not saying that it will uh, take it completely, but I think much of that extra bilateral effort would, would be off now. That's Helen Munk Ravneborg. She will uh, talk a little bit later. Would you comment on this? Uh, I go, Chris? Yeah. I, uh, two quick things. One to Hella first. I hope you're right. I think we have good theoretical reasons for believing that aid is more effective when it's coordinated through multilateral agencies. Uh, so I hope you're right. I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm worried that you're not right. Uh, you know, so one Why of the- Why is that? Well, one of the problems I think with, if you're, a, um, I'd be really interested to hear from folks who work for Danita, CETA, or USAID, or some other uh, development agency. Uh, one of the problems I think that we have is, as we've given, as Chris suggested, as the rules in multilateral institutions have changed to give developing countries more power in allocating the type of finance and where the money goes, I think some donor governments have been nervous about you know, delegating more 
uh, allocation authority to multilats, and so they control it more bilaterally, and they can direct it to the things they want to direct. And I think they want to direct it to green finance, not brown. A uh, second quick point I'd like to make is just in response to this question about what would Ugandans like? And obviously, Aseza is in a, in a very good position to answer that. Uh, there is a new study that's just been done by Nielsen, Findlay, and Milner, where they do a randomized controlled trial, and they ask Ugandan citizens, would you rather get your, you know, this particular project financed by the U.S., by the World Bank, by China, or by the Ugandan government? And uh, they have, I thought, wh what I thought were really interesting and counterintuitive findings. Uh, so anyway, if you want to follow up on that, I think that's a good study to look at. Ephraim Konya from IFPRI. The question goes to the first presenter. Did you include uh, aid to military among the dirty aid? And secondly, uh, the World Bank was shown to be among the big donors in the country, but I, I'm doubting that. Is that including the, the, the credit that is given to the countries and they're going to pay back? Is that included also as aid while it is actually credit? Um, Mafalda Duarte from African Development Bank. Uh, so I have uh, one comment, uh, which is, um, I would exp and from our experience, we see that more and more we are investing more and more on climate change, um, and and the trend has been increasing after 2018. In fact, it increased after 2010. But the issue will be in relative terms compared to the amount overall amount dedicated to climate change. How much will it go? through multilateral and bilateral. I think in absolute terms, we will see much more investment from, from multilaterals, but the, relative, the relativeness of, of this, and in terms of your argument of bilateral versus multilateral, is something interesting to follow on. I had another question, which was on the aidata.org. Um, your classification of climate change, does it follow the OECD Rio markers, because we know that uh, the OECD Rio markers classification on climate change um, has been questioned as overcoding uh, climate change activity. So I'm, I'm wondering whether your classification differs from the OECD one. Thank now you. you can really hear the difficulties with statistics, and especially when it comes to, to aid. Uh, can you answer this very shortly, please, because we are over time a little bit? Yes, I, is, is I, I can possible? answer very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we do not include military assistance um, in Dirty Aid. We, we include development finance, which is a bit broader than official development assistance, but we don't include military aid. Um, uh, with respect to uh, Rio markers, for example, no, our, our coding, are, is, it's not in any way based on Rio markers. The database includes that information where relevant. Uh, and it might be an interesting project to see the disparity between our coding and Rio markers over time mm -hmm. to see just the extent to which Rio markers may have been manipulated for political purposes, perhaps. But, uh, but no, we, we use a separate coding. That was one of the, the reasons for this, for this enterprise, was to ensure consistency in coding over time and across donors. So. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And we will follow you all closely in the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm.